aircraft mechanics are always the first to appear at an airfield. On land, they are the real masters behind all military aircraft. Until the sortie begins, none of the engineers knows which crew will fly. Unlike pilots and navigators who may operate different types, technicians always remain loyal to just one machine. Pre-flight routines for frontline aviation in Russia differ greatly from common practice in many NATO air forces, where technicians check only the most critical parts of an aircraft between successive missions. In Russian aviation, technicians check absolutely every one of the aircraft systems before each and every flight. If there's any doubts about even one component, the flight is cancelled. Before any flight, it's traditional for pilots to add the finishing touch by polishing the skylight, which is what flight crews call the glass canopy over the cockpit. This fighter bomber is affectionately known in Russia as the Duckling because of its flattened nose cone. Concealed beneath the outer skin is a special radar antenna which helps crew to take control of immediate airspace and lock on to any target, whether it's on the land, on the water or in the air. The Su-34 has a comfortable cockpit designed for long-hauled flights. Two people can stand upright behind the seats. There's also a toilet and cooking facilities. This aircraft was originally designed for naval pilot training to teach them how to land on aircraft carriers. But while it was being designed and built, the new machine was redesignated for combat duties. SU-34, fullback, crew, two. Maximum speed, 1,900 kilometers per hour. Combat radius, 1,100 kilometers. Service ceiling, 17,000 meters. Maximum takeoff weight, 44,360 kilograms. As a bomber, the Su-34 is capable of destroying ground targets or warships. Its weaponry weighs up to eight tons, but the airframe has excellent flying characteristics, making it a highly effective fighter. It's highly maneuverable in air combat, able to defend itself, as well as to seek out and destroy enemy planes in the air. Russia, every pilot and navigator has his own particular specialization, offensive, air combat or bombing. But whatever field a young pilot chooses, his road to achieving the status of flying ace will never be fast. From the military academy, 
endless flight simulator training begins. That's followed by exams and flights with instructors. Then a minimum number of solo flight hours and the beginner's takeoffs gradually become combat training. four years of military service, can a pilot fulfill practically any airborne task that might be asked of him. Pilots often joke about this Su-24 aircraft, saying that it flies like an iron. It's a powerful, heavy and stable bomber that can carry out a missile and bomb attack against a target in almost all weather conditions, even at night. Its most prominent feature is the variable geometry of its wings. The pilot can select any one of four different configurations. During the takeoff phase, the wings are extended to their maximum angle to generate the most lift. SU-24, Fencer, crew, two. Maximum speed, 1,400 kilometers per hour. Combat radius, 560 kilometers. Service ceiling, 11,000 meters. Maximum takeoff weight, 39,700 kilograms. The bull or buffalo is a symbol of strength and power. The beast has no natural enemies. My first flight in this aircraft went well, and my colleagues congratulated me. In keeping with tradition, they all sat on the nose wheel. I was left with very warm impressions and memories of that flight. In combat mode, the Su-24's wings are swept back, almost flat against the fuselage. This reduces drag, allowing for much greater speed and maneuverability. Operating combat aircraft at night is always dangerous. Sunset, even small clouds can blur the horizon as sky merges with ground. Pilots orientate themselves by instruments and with help from ground control. With the latest in guidance technology, this ultra modern bomber can attack land targets in virtually any weather conditions and in the dark. That's why night flying exercises are given extremely high priority. After sunset, takeoff and landings are practiced until late into the night.
This aircraft has acquired worldwide renown, along with other brands like the Kalashnikov rifle or the Russian ballet. The MiG-29, a lightweight, all-weather frontline fighter that somehow appears to defy the laws of gravity. NATO has given the MiG-29 the code name Fulcrum because of its extreme maneuvering stability. The actual fulcrum point is hidden in the aircraft's design. There's no fuselage in the strict sense of the word. In its place is an enlarged wing root. The upper surface of the cockpit graduates into the wings, forming an airflow vortex a little like a tornado. This generates a dramatic increase in lift, allowing the fighter to perform quite unbelievable turns at supersonic speed. The MiG-29 has earned international praise as one of the world's most effective and safe combat fighters. An engineer was once asked what kept the aircraft flying during its spectacular maneuvers. He replied that it was the thousands of hands of the people who had created it. The MiG-29's primary short-distance weapon is the controllable P-73 missile with infrared targeting system. 443, attack. Wilco, 443. Launch authorized. Observing the operation, 443. Titan, on track. Target arrow, 443, ready. Roger. Launch authorized. The pilot can choose between missiles or gunfire throughout any stage of an airborne maneuver. I grew up near the airbase, so every flight that took off from Lipetsk airbase was right in front of my eyes. I dreamed of becoming a pilot ever since I was a child. I wanted to become a fighter pilot to perform all those amazing exercises in the air. My dream came true, and now I fly the MiG-29. I truly believe that this aircraft is one of the finest aircraft in the world. It lets you do so many different things. As a pilot, I'm absolutely delighted with it. MiG-29, Fulcrum, crew, one. Maximum speed, 2,400 kilometers per hour. Combat radius, 3,000 kilometers. Service ceiling, 18,000 meters. Maximum takeoff weight, 18,500 kilograms. Two sixty nine, take off. Two sixty nine, take off. Two fifty four, left three hundred level. In the Russian Air Force, every combat aircraft has its own number. On the radio, neither pilots nor controllers will ever say the aircraft type, only its designated number. Two fifty four eight, clear to land. Air traffic controllers have full command of all aircraft movements around the base. They give permission for engine startup, takeoff and landings, and then remain in contact with all crews in flight, relaying information about any passenger liners flying within a 100 kilometer radius of the base. Combat aircraft are vectored away from conflicting traffic, so they can perform their exercises a safe distance from civilian airplanes. 269, return to zone 6. 
600. Roger, 600. To Russian pilots, this aircraft is known as the Rook. The aeroplane went through a baptism of fire in the early 80s, when the Soviet Union was engaged in its military campaign in Afghanistan. Among pilots, the Su-25 is especially known for its high levels of survivability. Su-25 attack aircraft often return safely to base having sustained heavy damage. With just one engine, with damaged ailerons or bullet traces on the cockpit canopy. Su-25, Frogfoot. Crew, 1. Maximum speed, 1,000 kilometers per hour. Combat radius, 1,250 kilometers. Service ceiling, 7,000 meters. Maximum takeoff weight, 19,000 kilograms. Current versions of the Su-25 attack aircraft are still in active service in Russia, Ukraine, Belarus, Angola, Afghanistan and several other countries. The Su-25 is a combat aircraft that was designed to provide air support to ground forces on the battlefield. I love this plane very much. People usually say I'm either a bomber or a fighter, but I tell them, no guys, I'm neither of those, you're wrong. I'm an attacker. It's a proud name, that's why they called it the Rook, because it looks like one. You know, the Rook is a proud and beautiful bird, and fearsome in its way. When you approach the aircraft, you greet him in your mind. You say, come on, pal, we'll go on a flight now and everything's going to be all right. We have a tradition. When a lieutenant takes a 25 out for the first time, he gives out a cigarette once he's landed. Who does he give them to? To the instructor who trained him and showed him everything. He gives a pack to him. Even if the instructor doesn't smoke, he gets a pack with the pilot's signature. I've trained something like six lieutenants, and I still have every one of those signed packs at home. Major General Alexander Khachevsky is the officer wearing the light blue flying suit. He is the commanding officer at the Lipetsk Air Base. Under his supervision, these pilots are working on their aerobatics routine. Once airborne, these aviators will execute the Su-27's trademark maneuvers. They are the Falcons, Russia's famous air display team. They're said to dance in the air. Aerobatics are notoriously risky. It takes teamwork, coordination and pinpoint accuracy. They fly to the absolute extremes of the aircraft's maneuverability, at high speed and with wingtips just centimeters apart.
quite apart from the spectacle, close formation flying also has a tactical purpose. When aircraft fly in such close proximity, they're interpreted by enemy radar as a single larger plane. As soon as the group reaches its destination, the formation splits with each aircraft diverting to its own allocated task. Alexander Karczewski is a veteran high-level solo aerobatics pilot. The Bell is his favorite figure. A complex and dangerous air combat maneuver, the fighter gathers speed in a vertical climb, then suddenly hangs motionless in the air. The Su-27 is built as an almost perfect glider, but also has extremely powerful engines, a combination that allows the pilot to float in the air at minimum height and very low speed. Immediately after landing, the commander studies each flight with technicians and pilots. He's well known as an undefeated aviator. In the Atlantic Ocean, he triumphed over American F-15 fighter pilots in training maneuvers. He beat South Africa's best pilot in a training flight. At Colmar Air Base in France, he was offered the chance to fly a simulated combat mission in the Mirage 2000. Despite never having seen the aircraft or ever flown it, he climbed into the cockpit, took off, and won the challenge. His French counterparts were stunned and rewarded his outstanding airmanship with an honorary decoration. The Lipetsk Air Base commander has secured the majority of his air victories in the Su-27. Su-27, flanker. Crew, one. Maximum speed, 2,500 kilometers per hour. Combat radius, 1,680 kilometers. Service ceiling, 18,500 meters. Maximum takeoff weight, 30,000 kilograms. The Su-27's primary objective, with its excellent aerodynamic characteristics, is to gain and maintain air supremacy. It's not easy to predict which pilot might win, the one flying a modern aircraft or a second-generation plane. The outcome will depend on the airman's skill as well as the conditions prevailing during the maneuvers. There's not one best aircraft, but the pilot who acquires the target first and makes best use of the weapon systems is the one who will prevail. Once flying is over, the aircraft are sent to a distant hangar on the base. Pilots can return to their homes. There are no combat missions in peacetime. <laughs>